The attacker will always use a deceptive approach. They will never give you the full intention from the word go. Not unless they've been overtly aggressive right from the start, where they're trying to intimidate you into capitulation. One thing that has to be taken into consideration is the disregard of the consequences which an attacker will show. They're not interested in the fact that they may hurt you. They're not interested in the fact that they may end up in police prosecution. They want what they want and they'll go to extreme lengths to get that. From your perspective, the main issue of what it's all about from, for you is self-preservation. The mental control required to cope with a confrontational situation is intense. A real violent attack is 90% mental, 10% physical. Without mental control, there is no way that you will be able to get your limbs, your fists, your feet, your head to perform properly, whether it's to fight or even just to run away. The mental discipline and determination is a pivotal factor. You must develop that and structure your training to accommodate that strengthening. Having an understanding of the attacker's psychology, the type of dialogue they will use, the body language they will display, the way they will try and prime you, and any pre-incident indicators they may display to give you a sign of what their intentions are. You've also got to accept consequences. Physical, legal, emotional, they're all contributing factors to what will make the situation complete. When faced with an attacker, you've got to try, when possible, not to show concern, not to display pain, because that will incense them even further. They're going to make the most of that. They're going to exploit that to the maximum. You've got to be confident in your ability. Your commitment to what you're going to do is vital. You've got to give 100%. If you're going to deal with somebody physically, and you're going to fight somebody on a physical level, you've got to give it 100%. Anything less isn't going to do the job. On the whole, you defeat an assailant on a mental level. If in a physical confrontation where you're actually fighting for your life, you will defeat your opponent or your attacker on a mental level through the physical applications you apply by busting a kneecap, knocking them unconscious, knocking the teeth out, all affect the person's confidence on a mental level and that is what you're attacking. That is a way that you will defeat somebody. Understand the mental psychology which is applied and is necessary to understand in a realistic situation. The body language that an attacker will display will involve gesturing. Gestures are used to emphasise threats or demands, whether it be somebody pointing to emphasise a point, I want your money, give me your money. If it's somebody picking a fist up to emphasise, you're going to get this in a minute if you don't hand over your wallet, or if you, you stare at me again, you're going to get this, anything along those lines. Soft, these are subtle pre-incident indicators. They're giving a signal of intention. Posturing is also used. If somebody's trying to bluff, a lot of the time they will posture, splaying the hands, acting aggressive, but they're not actually moving forward with it. Anybody showing signals of aggression backing off can be taken to a degree that they're bluffing, but not disregarded. You'd be foolish to drop into the frame of mind that this person isn't going to follow it up because you've got the, the possibility then of a sniper attack. You turn your attention away because you think the threat's gone and you're attacked from the side. They're all employed with the appropriate language. These have been highly publicised with the likes of Jeff's videos and the Pavement Arena series, so I'm not going to spend any time on this. But you've got to understand that an attack will not come from nowhere with no preceding dialogue. Dialogue accompanies nearly every attack you could ever encounter. Pre-incident indicators. These are behavioural displays of what is to follow. Slight signals. On a conscious level, with the right education, these are recognisable. You can see what's coming. As I've already mentioned, somebody moving forward, slightly stepping forward, turning sideways on to get a sideways shot at you. Clenching the fists. Leaning forwards. Picking the hands up as though you're getting in a pose ready to strike. These are things that have to be picked up on. On a general level though, pre-incident indicators are detected subconsciously. This is what people refer to as gut instinct. They get a bad feeling about a situation. The important thing is not to override this feeling and ignore it. Go with it, use it. These are behavioural instincts which you have developed since birth to give you the impression and the feeling that something isn't quite right. In those circumstances, either avoid or be extremely wary. 
It's a case of processing the peripheral information that is given. For example, we're faced by more than one attacker. People can get their attention drawn to the person doing all the talking, while the mate takes a sideways step and sidelines you. It's things such as this that you must be aware of. 